Good morning, everybody. Um, <clears throat> the constitutional standard for impeachment is treason, bribery, and other high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, we're still waiting for our Republican friends to articulate what they think uh, the high crime and misdemeanor is. In this case, we have gotten extremely far afield uh, from the constitutional standard. Uh, nobody can state on their side what they think uh, Joe Biden did, even as a private citizen, uh, that would constitute some kind of criminal offense. Um, their most recent star witness, Alexander Smirnoff, is now in jail, uh, being held as a flight risk uh, after being indicted by uh, the special counsel who was named by Donald Trump. David Weiss for lying to the FBI and creating a false documentary uh, record. So this has been a comedy of errors from the beginning. Um, all of the revelations that are in um, the legal pleadings filed by uh, David Weiss now give a very strong whiff of a Russian intelligence operation. Um, and so I think that our colleagues uh, would do best at this point to fold up the circus tent and allow us to focus on something that would actually be of benefit to the American people. Do you think that you're particularly interested in hearing from Hunter Biden today? Well, <clears throat> um, you know, every other witness that we've spoken to um, has confirmed um, this basic conclusion that Joe Biden was not involved in Hunter Biden's uh, business ventures. He did not profit from Hunter Biden's business ventures, <clears throat> and he rendered no official favors or benefits to Hunter Biden's business venture. So uh, I, I hope that we will test those propositions. And uh, if we are satisfied that he and the dozen other witnesses we've spoken to um, are um, telling a coherent and credible story, then this thing is over. Two months ago, Hunter Biden said that he would testify in public in front of cameras. Where are you on that now? Would you go back to that? You... Well, the majority has already rejected that, so this is where we are. But after today, though, do you think they're still rejecting? I mean, they're still rejecting. Yeah. Again, I think this investigation is over at this point. Uh, there's really nothing left to pursue. Uh, but Hunter Biden uh, cheerfully volunteered to go before the whole world. And our colleagues on the Republican side did not want that. They wanted today's uh, behind a closed door uh, proceeding, and that's what we're doing. Now. Congressman, do you still expect it then to go into an open hearing? And then um, House Republicans have mentioned that they have more beyond what Mr. Alexander Smirnoff has, has raised. Yes, uh, there's always a promise of more evidence. Uh, I remember when Gal Luft was the star witness who was going to produce the bombshell revelations. He's now on the land being um, searched for by the U.S. government for his crimes. Uh, the most recent witness to implode is, of course, Alexander Smirnoff, who started the whole thing with the false allegation that Burisma had given $10 million in illegal bribes to Joe Biden, to Hunter Biden, and now that has proven to be just a specimen of classic Russian disinformation and propaganda, according to David Weiss, who Donald Trump had appointed U.S. attorney and is, is the special counsel in the Hunter Biden case. Look, let's remember, there's an entire special counsel appointed just to deal with Hunter Biden and uh, his tax charges and his gun charges. Um, and so all of this is a complete sideshow. Uh, if somebody thinks that there is uh, some high crime or misdemeanor relating to Joe Biden, they should tell us what it is. But so far, we haven't heard anything. Sir. Um, President Trump was impeached twice. Um, from just general rule from overseas, it's very surprising. It seems like there's a two, two standards. Uh, well, can you explain that to us? Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure I follow the question. The President but Trump was impeached twice. Yes. And this impeachment is much more complicated. Is there, it seems like there's two separate systems for those who watch it from overseas. Yeah. Um, well, um, impeachments like criminal prosecutions follow people's criminal conduct. Donald Trump incited a violent insurrection uh, and an attempt to overthrow a presidential election. 
and he was impeached by the House of Representatives in a bipartisan impeachment, and there was a 57 to 43 vote in the Senate to convict him. Now, he uh, escaped conviction by 10 votes. He beat the constitutional spread of a two-thirds majority, but there were commanding bipartisan, bicameral majorities defining as a constitutional fact that he'd engaged in an insurrection against the 2020 presidential election. He didn't accept, and to this day, he does not accept the fact that Joe Biden beat him by more than 7 million votes, 306 to 232 in the Electoral College. Um, and so this absurd impeachment investigation is just a continuation of Donald Trump's refusal to accept the results of the 2020 presidential election. And I think everybody can understand that for what it is. Remember, there were 60 federal and state court decisions rejecting every claim of electoral fraud and corruption that were advanced by Donald Trump and the Republicans after that election. And yet still, election denialism is at the heart of Donald Trump's political program and also at the heart of uh, this attack on President Biden today. So it's a, it's a shameful spectacle, I think. What do you have to say about the recent interview of Jason Galanis? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The president was on the phone with the former mayor of Moscow. Yeah, um, I haven't seen any documents on that, but this is the convicted felon who's in prison who they went to see. Um, you know, he's a, another star witness in the lineup of, uh, you know, alleged uh, felons and um, uh, fugitives who make up the, the lineup for the Republicans. Yeah, well, the, that's right. I don't know. I haven't seen uh, any documentation on that. I'm happy to look at it. But, um, again, nobody can tell us what is the high crime or misdemeanor. We, we told them, sir, you know, that Donald Trump incited a violent insurrection and we mobilized all of the public evidence. And then there was all kinds of evidence that came out later in the bipartisan January 6th committee that documented exactly what Donald Trump had done. What did Joe Biden do? Nobody can tell us. One of the biggest revelations from the Devin Archer testimony is that Joe Biden spoke with Hunter Biden's business partner multiple times. Now, he said they didn't talk about business, but do you think that's appropriate that then Vice President Biden was speaking with his son's business partners and you expect to ask him about that at all today? Well, first of all, uh, the standard, of course, for impeachment is not what I think is appropriate or not appropriate. The standard for impeachment is high crimes and misdemeanors. Um, felony offenses, uh, major public offenses against the public good. So you're talking about a time when Joe Biden was a private citizen, Hunter Biden's always been a private citizen, and my Republican colleagues were the last ones to try to do anything about lobbying and uh, the culture of political influence in Washington. If you want to have serious hearings about that, let's have serious hearings about that. I've urged Chairman Comer uh, for us to have a serious hearing about rampant violations of the foreign and domestic emoluments clauses during the Trump administration. We released a report last year uh, documenting, with receipts, nearly $8 million that Donald Trump collected while he was in office from China including CEFC, from Saudi Arabia, from United Arab Emirates, and from other foreign governments. That raises a profound problem. Hunter Biden has never been in office. And during the whole time that they're focused on this investigation, Joe Biden wasn't in office. He had finished his term as vice president, and he had not announced any plans to run for president. So it, it is a wild goose chase related to the actions of private citizens. All right. Thank you very much.